What's up, good people? Welcome back to Cheese Sticks and Anxiety. I'm your host, Barry Lumber Squatch, and probably right off the bat, you're wondering uh, why the Pit Vipers? Why no hat? Well, I I'm, don't like wearing a hat anymore. Well, I do, but you don't need to know that. I just felt like keeping the hair back and out of my face because I have a lot of hair. I'm just waiting to see if I'm going to get cut or not. The Pit Vipers, though, are twofold. Number one, I didn't sleep very well and I have allergies, so I have these massive bags under my eyes. These bags are so big that, uh, what's, a, what's a good joke, uh, Kim Kardashian wants to buy them because she thinks they're super exclusive. Alright, that was shit. But number two is because this episode, right, is beyond heavy. Like, these glasses have become kind of synonymous with death metal now, with caveman riffs. With, you know, like, you see all, I, I shouldn't say all, but a majority of the newer death metal bands rock in Pit Vipers. Now, I do like the Pit Vipers because they cover more of my face. So, like, when I'm out, wherever. Um, oh, this one. This one's not... There we go. You can adjust them. Uh, it covers more of my eyes. The sun tends to bother my eyes a lot. Not that there's sun in here, but there is a light right there. It has nothing to do with it. But back to the death metal stuff. So, like... All the uber heavy bands now, all the ones with the caveman riffs, they're throwing these on and it's it's like uh, the new battle vest, like the new back patch, however you want to call it. The heavy bands are rocking the Pit Vipers and this episode is super heavy. I'm talking, I've got the heaviest shit on vinyl ever, just ever. Now, that's not really what this episode is about. This episode is about weird shit in your collection. Now, if you're like me, right, you're probably uh, middle-aged, graying, a little overweight, don't get enough sleep, still don't know where you're going in life or what you're doing, um, have a family or don't have a family, I don't know, um, and you probably have, like, vinyl records. I know it's it's kind of weird, you know, vinyl records. Records are records, but they're not. That's another story. Um, I sometimes, when I find a good one, or not necessarily a good one, but look out for people selling lots of records. And when I mean lot, I don't mean like a lot. I mean like, you know, they sell like a bunch of them for like a price. For a, you get like, uh, I think one lot of records I got was 250 I paid maybe $75 for it. And a lot of times you buy them sight unseen. You don't know what's going to be in there. You, you kind of like, the people might have an idea, but it's generally stuff that's been in the family for ever and they don't want them. It's just taking up space. So you go in and you're like, it's like, you just don't know. You don't know what you're getting. And sometimes you get lucky, other times you get a bunch of crap. Now, I don't throw anything out. Unless it's looking really bad, it's cracked or whatever. I, I tend to save all vinyl, all records. I was just about to grab a drink. But it's, it's not my usual drink. But it is a tumbler with uh, the Red Sox logo. And a lot of, the, a lot of times these record lots are older you're talking 40s 50s 60s you're not going to have your beetles in there you're not going to have your rolling stones your, your you know the stuff that everybody kind of looks for um and you're going to get a lot of oddities so while this video is going to be super heavy and again some of the heaviest stuff ever put on vinyl it's not music it's something totally different. And I'm going to try to do this every now and then. It's not always going to be the same. But I'm going to try to go through what I have and pick out the like, oddities. Stuff that you don't see nowadays on record. On vinyl. However you want to say it. And you know what? Watch this. Vinyls. That'll get some people to say it. And I think my glasses are crooked. I know my face is crooked, but whatever. Um, that'll drive me crazy too with my OCD. So, what am I talking about? Some of, and I, this blew my mind. I didn't 
even realize this was a thing. Like, ever. I, I, I had no clue, no concept, that at any given point in time, somebody had the idea to go out and record trains and put them on records. This is a thing. I had no, I, zero clue. Zero clue that, and these aren't just regular trains. These are like steam locomotives. People recorded trains and put them on vinyl. Mind-blowing. Like, boom. I know collecting model trains is a thing. I know... Riding trains is, a, you know, as a hobby, riding trains and restoring trains and all that, taking pictures of trains, but recording steam locomotives and putting them on wax, I didn't, it just, like, wow. So I've got one, two, three, four albums I'm going to show you real quick. And again, nothing's real quick with me. Oh, except for, um, and, and it's amazing, like what this this stuff is. So, let's start. Under, I'm going in order um, according to Discogs by popularity. So um, I'm using the wrong mouse. I got too many computers. Um, I shouldn't say popularity. Maybe rarity. So, like the first one is going to be an album that the most people have. Like according to Discogs, 44 people have this. 24 want it. Um, average rating is 2.6 out of 5. That's kind of sad. What am I talking about? The Faded Giant. Sounds of Steam Railroading Volume 2. Um, it is a record. This is how it came. I didn't have a sleeve. I probably should put... I put it in a poly bag. It was inside just the sleeve itself. So I got to get like a liner. Smells a little moldy, but here on the back, it tells you, like, the Fading Giant, uh, side one, side two, they call them uh, side B, yeah, this is, so this is volume two, so there's a one, there's a volume one of this. Um, it's a discriminating, <laughs> discriminating, uh, discriminating collection of sound of mixed and mainline trains pulled by steam locomotives. Recorded in the twilight of the era of steam railroading from trackside and from behind the tender of world's finest steam passenger locomotive, our fading giant. So, you're probably wondering, or maybe you're not wondering at this point. You just, you've already clicked off. And the vinyl itself is actually in pretty good shape still. Where am I going to put it? Yeah, put it right there. So, Lucky you, lucky you, I was able to find this on YouTube. So we're going to watch a minute of it now. And this is what, this is from the actual album. It was the only one of the albums I could find on YouTube. Um, so I'm going to get ready here. I'm going to pop this up. And I hope it worked correctly. Because if it didn't, look, if every time I hit two, two, two. I can't hear it. I gotta let me put my earphone in so I can share in this. So basically what the video is showing you, and it's 48 minutes of just train noises. That's it. Train noises. It's like you're there. If you close your eyes. I would have close my eyes. I can't see me. But my eyes are closed. Am I behind it? Am I riding it? Is it passing me by? I don't know. So basically this video just shows you like the liner notes and, and things of that nature. Uh, ah! So yeah, I mean if you wanted to go back yourself and check that out, you obviously could. It's The Fading Giant on YouTube. Um, I had posted one of these way back years ago when I, I first got it. I only I thought I only had one, but then I kept going through the collection. I found out I actually have four. Um, and this was the one I posted on Facebook. And somebody said, "Wow, you should put that stuff on eBay because there's train collectors that would want that." Uh, this is Iron Horse Rambles. This one's in 
uh, stereo. An official Reading Railroad recording. Um, LBP 1012. This one is in a liner. Does this one open up? This one is the gatefold, I think. So, yeah. Iron Horse Rambles. And you open it up. And it's all just pictures and stuff of the railroad. I'm trying to see myself. What I'm thinking. Hey, look, there I am. Hey, how you doing? It's, it's amazing. So that one is Iron Horse Rambles in stereo. In stereo. Ah. So you, you don't know where the train's coming from. It's a good thing it's not in surround sound. Right? Is it coming from behind me? Is it coming from the left? I don't know. So this one is, um, in, in terms of popularity going via Discogs, only 12 have this, but 8 want it. Now, these aren't extremely valuable. Like, the highest this one ever sold for on Discogs was $13. Uh, the first one I showed you, the Fading Giant, was $17.65. Sounds like a year. Who pays $17.65 for a record? I like even, like, round numbers. Um, and, if, yeah, so there's not even a lot of information on Discogs about this stuff. I don't even know, like, how many albums were ever put out that are just field recordings of trains like this is i i don't i'm still kind of stupefied by this oh this one i think is a gatefold too well i might have to break this one it's a there's notes a recording of train sounds oh shit sherlock so this one i think i might have done this backwards Ooh, i did this one should have been second because 13 have this and four want it and of course i'm talking about Berkshire in the Alleghenies. Whoa, look at that. Again, another one that didn't have a liner. Liner? Do you call it a liner or do you call it a sleeve? I don't know. I call it both. Because it's a sleeve in a sleeve or a liner in a sleeve. But it's not technically a liner. This one's got a few more pictures. Now, I did notice. I'm going to cover this up because I don't know if these people are still alive. Every single one of these... Uh, has a stamp on it somewhere that has the original owner's name on it. They are from Yonkers, New York. And I was thinking about, like, oh, maybe I should look them up and see if they're still alive. So that was That's always kind of one of the fun things, if you will, about buying records, you know, not going through them prior. Or not having like a fam, you know, the the owner of the records go through them because you'll find like um, you'll get like a Donny Osmond or a Marie Osmond record, and in it somebody will have cut out articles and pictures of the Osmonds and put them in there because that was like their th people loved the Osmonds obviously, and they collected them and pictures and posters. Uh, one album I have upstairs, I can, I keep trying every now and then I go and look, try to look, see if I can find the guy. Um, it was in a Fleetwood Mac album and it was like a discharge letter, like, but it was an honorable discharge letter from the military from the seventies. I think the guy was smoking a little bit of the weed or I don't remember. I, maybe I'll do that in another time, but I thought it'd be cool to like to try to find that guy and be like, dude, I've got your shit. Do you want it? Um, but I haven't found him yet. My glasses are still crooked, aren't they? Ooh, doesn't matter. This shit is heavy. Okay, last but not least, this one is the rarest because only two people have it, two people want it. It's never sold on Discogs. Um, and this one it comes with like an actual info sheet. I'm talking about extra one, two, three, five East. The Sound of Steam Trains, and it comes with an insert telling about the trains. This was from 1960. All of these are from, uh, this is 60. The Berkshire doesn't have a year, but I think that was 58 from some of the information I could find. Um, Iron Horse Rambles was 62, and the first one, Fading Giant, was 58. So, it seems like... The majority of these come from the time, like maybe when steam locomotives were really uh, going out of style. 
And, uh, you know, people get nostalgic, I guess. I mean, why else record trains? Obviously, now you wouldn't do it because you have YouTube. So, and on the back, right, you've got information about the trains, but then you also have, like, this uh, insert, right? It tells you extra one, two, three, five East, side A and side B. Of course, on the back, again, is the people's address and names, and probably somebody will stop that. Um, it's weird because they don't call them tracks they call them bands so you got band one band two band three like band three is uh three unit gp9 diesel e759 758 735 roll merchandise uh downgrade towards roanoke horns bellow as the diesels pass wow i am never gonna listen to these I probably should put them up on eBay because I guarantee you there's collectors that would love this stuff. You know, they... Oh, I just realized that the people's names was on the back there too, so you probably saw that. I'm going to say that these people own these probably aren't alive because I bought these from somebody in New Jersey. But maybe they have relatives. I don't know. So, I don't know. That That's cool, I think, showcasing some of the, the weirder stuff that's out there. And you got to probably remember too, at the time, it wasn't weird. It was... I don't know if it was normal, but I can't. I can't imagine these things were super popular, and maybe maybe they were. And I just a lot of people missed the boat, but it doesn't seem like there's a whole hell of a lot of them out there for sale. Um, and it's not like they're worth a lot of money. You know, it's not about that. I. I again, it's not something like I know people go out and buy a lot of records. You know, they'll get a couple hundred and something like this, they junk it or make it into art. And I'm kind of like, like, no, even though it's not my cup of tea or it's not something I'm going to listen to, it's still, it's something that it's historical, it's vintage. It, some Somebody at some point listened to these and they got some sort of enjoyment out of that. And I, that's one of the coolest parts of collecting like older records is the history behind the record like somebody held that record and they cherished it and yeah i don't understand listening to railroad recordings for the life of me um i can't i've been to yonkers but i don't think that at any given time there were a ton of steam locomotives uh, going through yonkers maybe there were i don't know i don't remember yonkers all that well but um yeah, I mean, somebody listened to that and they got some sort of enjoyment out of that. And that, that to me, is super cool and, and one of the best aspects of collecting records. That's why I will never throw that out. I will either just keep it or, at some point, I will put all four on eBay or Discogs or whatever and let somebody else who actually, like, appreciates or collects railroad memorabilia, let them have a go at it because... Plus, it keeps it out of the landfill. So, yeah. I don't know what the hell I'm going to call this video. Um, heavy, weird vinyl shit? I don't know. But I know I've got a lot more other stuff to kind of showcase somewhere down the road. Um, maybe not as weird as that. I don't know. You'll, your, your definition of weird is obviously different than mine. But uh, just thanks for taking the time out of your day to give this a uh, watch and a listen, however you do it. Sometimes I play them in the backgrounds when I watch videos. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that other happy stuff I know you people enjoy doing. Uh, thanks to the people who actually took the time out to watch the Metallica video that I did, uh, what was it, last Friday? Yeah. I was pretty long-winded, kind of like this one. I'm already way over the amount of time I wanted to do, but I just talk. So, again, like, comment, subscribe. Do me a favor, um, throw a share out this out there, you know, on the Facebooks or the Twitters for this. Um, next episode, I think, will drop on Friday. I don't know what it will be. But then the next week is going to be, like, all cassettes. Like, somebody on Instagram had this idea, like, just all cassette weeks on Instagram and so on and so forth. So I think I just might concentrate on some of the cassettes in my collection or some newer ones. Like I've done in the past. So, I don't know. 
I'm talking way too much. So thank you for being you. Thank you for watching. Uh, be kind to one another. I'll check you out next time.